What's up guys and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Metal Gear Solid, the first finale here on Republic of Joe actually and that is really exciting because what a game to have be the first Let's Play on the channel, this is awesome. I got Kyle here with me. You're gonna have to excuse me. I'm eating my chocolate chip homemade oh cookies my. and my sippy cup of apple yeah, juice. Yeah, right he has now. a sippy cup of apple juice. No, I literally <laughs> oh. have like a box of cookies my mom made me for like to take back to college. Hey, some whatever. kids wish their moms made them a box of cookies. No, I'm, I'm proud of that. All right, fact. that's freaking awesome. Those cookies are the best cookies I've ever had, and yeah. I literally have like a cup of. Like, Ooh, laser cutting. What is that? Welch's apple grape juice? Welch's or whatever? grape. Yeah. All right. Now that I'm done being innocent, let's go ahead and destroy this <laughs> huge Metal Gear. Yep. And as you can see, Liquid is actually exposed now. Like the little mouth of Metal Gear is opened, but he can survive full Stinger missiles, no problem. Look at this. I'm gonna lock on. Oh, maybe I'm a little too low. You know that move right there with the laser reminds me of the tail laser from the. Uh, Remember the first boss, I think, in Final Fantasy VII? The, oh yeah, 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 the scorpion thing? Yeah, if you attack while his tail's up, I forgot, oh, like, yeah, I forgot which one it is, but the tail laser, like, counterattack, that's what that reminds me of. Yep. Good thing Otacon isn't giving us wrong information like that game did. What if Otacon, like, didn't even mention the stinger missile? Like, what if you didn't even know you are supposed suppress to suppress a sneeze it? there. <laughs> what did <laughs> you say about Otacon? I was just saying, what if he told us to, like... I don't know, something completely wrong. He's like, like Snake, put away your stinger missiles. <laughs> <laughs> Try to shoot it with the SOCOM. You yeah, know how be, hard that would be? Oh my. We've already tried to kill him with the sniper rifle and it just dinged off his yeah, chest. Yeah, like the guy is made of steel. All right. It's, well, it's apparently ridiculous. he's liquid. Da -da oh my. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Should take. Look at his health. Like, come on. And that the is dragon like, I can't even bowl. see the bar, honestly. I know. Here. Dang. All right, this should be it. One more stinger missile. There we go, I'm just gonna keep it in here. There, he's dead. Did you shoot two? Snake. I'll crush you into dust. A snake? Liquid, you're still alive. I won't die. As long as you still live. Too bad. It looks like your revolution was a failure. Just because you've destroyed Metal Gear doesn't mean I am done fighting. Fighting? What are you really after? A world where warriors like us are honored as we once were. As we should be. That was Big Boss's fantasy. It was his dying wish. <sighs> when he was young, during the Cold War, the world needed men like us. We were valued then. We were desired. But things... Oh, are different now. With all the liars and hypocrites running the world, war isn't what it used to be. We're losing our place in a world that no longer needs us. A world that now spurns our very existence. You should know that as well as I do. After I launch this weapon and get our billion dollars, we'll be able to bring chaos and honor back to this world gone soft. Conflict will breed conflict. New hatreds will arise. Then we'll steadily expand our sphere of Influence. But as long as there are people, there will always be war. But the problem is balance. Father knew what type of a balance was best. Is that the only reason? <laughs> Isn't it reason enough for warriors such as us? I don't want that kind of world. Ha! You lie. So why are you here then? Why do you continue to follow your orders while your superiors betray you? 
Why did you come here? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you then. You enjoy all the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? Haven't you already killed most of my comrades? Th that was... <laughs> I watched your face when you did it. It was filled with the joy of battle. You're wrong. There's a killer inside you. You don't have to deny it. We were created to be that way. Created? Les enfants terribles. The terrible children. That's what the project was called. It started in the 1970s. Their plan was to artificially create the most powerful soldier possible. The person that they chose as the model was the man known then as the greatest living soldier in the world. Big Boss. But Father was wounded in combat and already in a coma when they brought him in. So they created us from his cells. With a combination of 20th century analog cloning and the Super Baby Method. Super Baby Method? They fertilized an egg with one of Father's cells and then let it divide into eight cloned babies. Then they transferred the clones to someone's uterus and later intentionally aborted six of the fetuses to encourage strong fetal growth. You and I were originally octuplets. Octuplets? Yes. The other six of our brothers were sacrificed to make us. We were accomplices in murder before the day we were even born. So it was you and I. Two fertilized eggs with exactly the same DNA. But they weren't finished yet. They used me as a guinea pig to create a phenotype in which all of the dominant genes were expressed to create you. I got all of the recessive genes. You took everything from me before I was even born. But you and I aren't his only children. What? The genome soldiers. They too are his progeny, carrying on his genetic legacy. But they're different. They're digital. With the completion of the Human Genome Project, the mysteries of humanity were laid bare. Thanks to Father's DNA, they were able to identify more than 60 soldier genes responsible for everything from strategic thinking to the proverbial killer instinct. Those soldier genes were transplanted into the members of the next generation special forces. That's how they became the genome soldiers. <laughs> That's right. The genome soldiers that you've been killing are our brothers with the same genes as ours. The genome soldiers? That's right. They are our brothers, created artificially through the alignment of nucleotides to mimic our father's genes. They too are the product of numerous sacrifices. Sacrifices? Human experiments! 1991, the Gulf War. The military secretly injected soldiers with the soldier genes. The Gulf War syndrome that hundreds of thousands of returning soldiers complained about was a side effect of it. Ha! Everyone knows that the Gulf War syndrome was caused by exposure to depleted uranium used in the anti-tank rounds. <laughs> that was just a cover story issued by the Pentagon. First, they tried to say it was post-traumatic stress disorder, then chemical or biological weapons. The poison gas detection units and the anti-serin injections, they were all just a cover-up of the secret genetic experiments. So then, the so-called Gulf War babies that have been reported by Gulf War veterans are... Yes, they too are our brothers and sisters. So the genome soldiers mean that the experiments were a success? Success? Don't be a fool. They're a complete failure. We are on the verge of extinction. What? Have you ever heard of the asymmetry theory? Nature tends to favor asymmetry. Those species which have gone extinct all show signs of symmetry. 
The genome soldiers suffer from the same problem. Signs of symmetry. So do I. As do you. That's right. We are all on the verge of death at the genetic level. We don't know when or what type of disease will occur. That's why we need the old man's genetic information. You want Big Boss's DNA so you can save your family? It's very touching. In nature, family members don't mate with each other, and yet they help each other to survive. Do you know why? It increases the chance that their genes will be passed on to a new generation. Altruism among blood relatives is a response to natural selection. It's called the selfish gene theory. You're telling me that your genes are ordering you to save the genome soldiers? You can't fight your genes. It's fate. All living things are born for the sole purpose of passing on their parents' genes. That's why I'll follow what my genes tell me. And then I'm going to go beyond. In order to break the curse of my heritage. And to do that, first, I will kill you. Look behind you! No! Is she alive? I'm not sure. She was alive a few hours ago. Poor girl kept calling your name. Meryl. Stupid woman. Falling in love with a man who doesn't even have a name. I have a name. No! We have no past, no future, and even if we did, it wouldn't be truly ours. You and I are just copies of our father, Big Boss. Let Meryl go. As soon as we've finished our business, we're almost out of time. You're talking about Fox Die. No. It seems now that the Pentagon knows that Metal Gear is destroyed. They've arrived at a decision. They won't even need a PDA. If you want the details, why don't you ask your precious Colonel Campbell? Colonel, can you hear me? Yes, I'm listening. What is the Pentagon trying to do? Colonel, answer me. The Secretary of Defense has taken over active control of this operation. He's on his way there by AWACS. What for? To bomb the place. What? Not only that, B-2 bombers just lifted off from Galena Air Force Base. They're carrying B-6113 surface-piercing tactical nuclear bombs. What? Metal Gear is destroyed. Tell the Secretary of Defense. The Secretary of Defense heard that Naomi double-crossed us, and he's worried about Fox Die. Now that there's no more danger of a nuclear strike from Metal Gear, he's going to do whatever's necessary to cover up the truth of what really happened here. He's going to drop a nuclear bomb to vaporize all the evidence along with anyone who knows anything. Don't worry, Snake. I'll stop the nuclear strike. How? I may only be a figurehead here, but I'm still officially in command of this mission. If I issue an order to delay the strike, it'll confuse the chain of command and at least buy you some time. It'll give you a chance to escape. But, Colonel, if you do that... It's okay, Snake. The truth is, Foxhound was already the subject of an undercover investigation. Merrill was transferred to this base just before the terrorist attack as a way of manipulating me. Those bastards. I'm sorry. They forced me to cooperate in exchange for her life. You better get out of there, Snake. Are you sure? It'll be bad for you. Don't worry. It's the least I can do for you, after all the lies. Colonel. I'm ordering them to cancel the bombing run. After that, there's no turning back. What? What are you doing? What? Snake! Mei Ling, what happened to the Colonel? I don't believe it. What happened? Snake the Colonel! Roy Campbell has been relieved of duty. This is the Secretary of Defense, Jim Houseman. Put the Colonel back on. He's been placed under arrest for leaking top secret information and for the crime of high treason. Ridiculous. Yes, he's a ridiculous man. He truly believed that he was in command of this operation. You. Bastard. There won't be a speck of evidence left. I'm sure the president would want the same thing. 
president ordered this? The president is a busy man. I have complete authority here. How do you plan on explaining a nuclear attack on Alaska to the media? Don't worry. We've prepared a convincing cover story. We'll simply say that the terrorists exploded a nuclear device. Smart. You'll be murdering everyone here. The scientists, the genome army, everyone. Donald, the DARPA chief is already dead. So you didn't mean to kill the DARPA chief after all. He was my friend. And you could care less about what happens to everybody else, huh? Well, if you give me the optic disc, I might consider saving them. What are you talking about? Metal Gear's test data. Donald was supposed to bring it back. I don't have it. I see. Oh, well, that's okay. You two are an embarrassment from the 1970s. Our country's dirty little secret. You can't be allowed to live. Well, the bombs will be dropping soon, and you two have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> There's no way out for us. Let's finish this before the airstrike. You stole everything from me. Only your death can satisfy me. Only your death can return to me what is rightly mine. She'll make a beautiful sacrifice for our final battle. Do you see this? It will be the time limit for our final battle. This nuclear module is set to detonate at the precise moment of her death. If you win, you might still be able to save her. You could enjoy one brief moment of love before the end. If you cross this line, you fall. At this height, it will kill even you. Have at you, Snake. All right, so here we are finally at the last confrontation with Liquid Snake on top of Metal Gear. And hopefully things don't go too sour because we, uh, in practice for this, I was just unable to beat this guy at all. And by not, by being unable to beat him, he literally means die like Yeah, I times. died probably like eight times. And I know that little, like, text is coming up there. I don't really know why that's coming up. Like, I am playing on an emulator, so maybe that's why. But I haven't had, like, any problems at all this whole time, so I think that's pretty minor little thing the problems uh would, i'm more worried about the fact that you look like you're losing <laughs> oh listen all right we ain't gonna lose no way no way look we're about even health right now right now but i don't know <laughs> in a minute and 45 seconds where are we gonna be liquid does start firing up i'll pro all right how about this we'll go ahead and uh we'll go ahead and disclaim it with this i'll probably die once that's it if you die more than once again no I swear. no it's not gonna happen no now, Can't. I forgot, have we talked about the fire drill? No, <laughs> no, bring it up. The reason I'm saying this is, well, classified information. Nice. But anyway, <laughs> we were sitting here, I was editing a video, you know, just normal old night. Yep, and I was just on my computer, just reading some stuff online. The funny thing is, we were about to do this video. Yep. And then, all of a sudden, the most ear-piercing alarm I have ever heard in my life it was started going off. Apparently, there was, they were doing a fire drill today, and the alarm was just so loud and obnoxious. It, it was, was shaking me. Yeah, it was like, I guess because of the concrete walls in this place, like, it was really, really loud. Like, I've heard plenty of fire alarms in, like, you know, kindergarten, or not kindergarten, elementary school, junior high, yeah, high all, school. Yeah, all through schooling we've heard them. But I have never once heard a fire alarm that will shake, that actually, like, hurt my head. Yeah, it like, was really bad. Like, now I know the meaning of people will say, like, a ringing noise in your ear. Yeah, we, we know now. You know, one time, by the way, I was just listening to music or something, not even loud, 
All of a sudden, I got that tone in my ear, like a ringing. I was like, oh, great. Oh, God. Speaking of, oh, great, the bomb is freaking counting down. Awesome. All right, listen, I said one death. Not going to happen again. If it happens again, Not going to happen again. No. I will let you do the finale alone. <laughs> Not going to happen again. All right, so here we go again. Hopefully, I don't die. But let I don't, me see. I don't, I'm losing shit. Yeah, like, I've hey. died so many times in this thing. I don't know what's going on. But we were to go. I think we were talking about your like ear ringing. <laughs> no, well, I'm not sure if we were or not because we've cut out so many deaths. Ah, come on, get up, snake. No, we were talking about like the ear ringing thing that oh you were talking about. See, like I don't even know where I left off with all the cutting <laughs> out. I, what I was saying was I was listening to music one time and all of a sudden like this ringing developed in my ears, which I started like researching. And yeah, I, and he was just looking into. It and everything. I think you already covered that. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what it was called. Like tinnitus or tinnitus. Yeah, but I had never heard of that before. Dang. And look at Meryl in the back, like right next to that bomb. That's the timer. Like, if it liquid doesn't kill you, you have to worry about the timer. It's just frustrating all the way around. Well, it looks like he's having his way with you, honestly. <laughs> listen, all right? Listen, I'm going to take it to the liquid right now because I'm sick of dying of this guy. I'm sick of, like, telling my tinnitus <laughs> tonight the story over and over and over. There was something else you were talking about. Like, I was talking no, no, were you talking about like how these games were made in Japan, but they're really American? Oh, well, that was like one of the earlier Yeah, that was like in one of the drafts of this episode. They I was saying how this d game was developed by a Japanese Yeah, company. Konami. And yet it is very centered on the United States. Like it's awesome though, because I, from what I've heard, this that's like like not the only thing. Like the cover art of the original Metal Gear was based on like the movie poster for an American movie. Snake's name is from a movie like called Escape from New York, and then the guy's name was Snake Pliston. They got him by they got it from that. So it's just that it's obviously has influences from American movies. So that's a good thing you pointed out there. I can't think of like, or a lot of games like. I'm trying to think. There's no, like, bad... I think the voice acting in this game is fine. Yes, yeah, Snake's um, voice actor is awesome. I think his, his name is, like, David Hayter. He's been in the whole series. He's really great. The dude. reason I say that is because Squaresoft's ports... <laughs> or not ports, but translations are horrible. Yeah, they were we in the know. PlayStation 1 days. The voice acting in Resident Evil 1, for instance, was awful. Listen! Listen. As a hard Barry Burton fan, I could not sit and tolerate this. Barry Burton <laughs> blows, all right? Oh, my God! What is it? Barry Burton is... Hey, all right, he's a little bit fun. Thank Jill, you, the man. master of unlocking. You were almost a Jill Sand. Thank, Thank God! Oh my! Meryl. You? Snake! Oh, you're alive! Thank God! Meryl? Meryl, are you okay? Are you okay? Is that all you can say? Meryl, it must have been terrible. Oh, it wasn't that bad. I didn't give in to the torture. Torture? And things even worse than that. I was fighting too. Just like you. You're a strong woman. Fighting them made me feel closer to you. I felt like you were there with me. It gave me the strength to go on. But I was scared. I'm sorry. Don't say that. But it made me realize something. During all the pain and shame, there was one thing I was sure of. A single hope that I held on to. And that hope kept me alive. Snake, I wanted to see you again. Meryl. That's my Kodak. Snake, it's me. Otacon, good news. Meryl's okay. All right. You saved her, man. Good job. I got some bad news, too. We're about to be bombed. Oh, boy. I guess we're considered expendable. Is there a way out of here? A way out? Uh, yeah. 
You can take the loading tunnel to the surface. There's a parking garage right next to you. The tunnel leads from there to the surface. The door in front? No. It's a small entrance to the west of that door. How about the security? I just unlocked it. Who do you think you're talking to? I'll take care of security along your escape route, too. What are you going to do? Me? I... I'll stay here. Are you crazy? I need a little more time to take care of your escape route. But... Unlocking the security doors is difficult work. Only I can do it. Otacon... Don't worry. I'm staying here. It's my own decision. Otacon, this is a hardened shelter, but they're going to use a surface-piercing nuclear bomb. It won't hold. I'm through regretting the past. Life isn't all about loss, you know. Snake, I'm a complete person now. I've found a reason to live. Good. Don't die on me. Same to you. Take care of Merrill, okay? I will. Okay, I gotta go. I promise I'll do something about your escape route. Thanks. Thanks? Well, that sounds nice. I believe in you. Thanks, Snake. Let's get the hell out of here. What about him? Where's Otakon? He's... He's... fighting right now. With his old self. To be the man he wants to be. He's fighting for us too? Yeah. And I don't want it to be in vain. Me too. outside you need some clothes there's my sneaking suit hurry up hurry mm, looking good snake Alright, so now this is it. We gotta go ahead and get out of here before the nuclear bombs completely eradicate the facility. All I have to say is Otakon. <laughs> I wasn't gonna root. My god. Otakon! I don't know how they let that pass, but they did. Otakon is in the game. Why all do right. you not have any guns? I liquid took them all, apparently. Can I choke these guys out? Oh, dang, I actually can. Another thing, didn't it look like they jumped off the wrecks after that thing? After the I always thought Snake went to like the knee or something like of the Metal Gear. It oh dang! Like, it looked like Meryl jumped off into his arms and he was on the ground. Though. I don't know. He is Snake. I mean, he's strong as beans, right? <laughs> if he can survive a body falling from that high, falling into his arms without them breaking, <laughs> I think he could land on his legs, you know, like... Snake is beast. But we gotta go ahead and fight our way out of here. Hopefully, oh, no, I'm not gonna say Otakon. Hopefully, Otakon will live up to his promise of securing the escape route. And I always love how you can go into first person like this. It just looks like Medal of Honor to me if you gotta no, play I was that gonna game. say, I hate to keep comparing it to Resident Evil 4, but I can remember when, I think... Somebody was driving that truck and you had to be in the back of it. Oh, uh, what was that? Metal Gear Solid 4 or... Did I say... I was, I Resident, Resident Evil 4? Evil 4? I don't know. I don't even remember. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Ashley's driving like that big, huge thing that crushes walls. Yeah, and you gotta like ride in the bed of the truck and shoot. I don't know why that's reminding me of Dang, you're full of Resident Evil 4 references these days. I don't know why. <laughs> well, these games are kind of similar a tiny bit to me. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Oh, come on. I thought I was gonna get that guy. And you could just go like this if you wanted, but I like first person. Do you better. have to kill them before she'll drive or something? I think you have to... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you do have to kill them before that you go. That is ghetto. Why can't she just... 
This, all right, you know what? I'm tired of ripping. Let's just accept <laughs> the bull, all right? Just accept it because look at this. Not yet, Snake. It's not over yet. Liquid. He was <laughs> dead. <laughs> He's not dead yet. Is he ever going to die? My I don't know. Liquid is pretty re resilient. I think he's proven that. Dang. All you got to do right here, by the way, is just go back and forth. He has like a FAMAS in his arms. I don't know if you can see it. He's driving one hand. And he'll pop you every once in a while. But if you just stay on top of him like this, he won't, be, he won't be that big of a problem. What would you say about Grand Theft Auto 4? He's driving one arm, shooting ghetto style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nico Bellic would be yeah, proud. Bellic, yeah. Dude, what speaking was his of that, brother's name? Roman? Roman. I was going to say, speaking of that, one of my like teacher's assistants, his name is Mr. Bellic. It's awesome. I... I have nothing to say about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Now, if only he was Serbian and from Grand Theft Auto 4. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I wonder if anyone's ever asked him, like, if he knows about Grand Theft Auto. He must get it. I mean, everybody knows Grand Theft Auto. Everybody's played Grand Theft Auto 4. I'm pretty sure they know who Nico is. You know what would be awesome is if we did, like, a Grand Theft Auto 5 when it came out? Oh, man, that'd be awesome. I don't even, like, we've talked about it privately, but I don't think we've mentioned it in episodes. Like, I don't know if I'm going to get that game on a console or on the PC or what. That's like, a hard choice. I honestly. like 4 on the PC a lot ever since I've gotten it on, like, the PC day. The thing is, like, if Fallout 4 comes out, when it comes out, I will 100% get it on, on, on the PC. PC. yeah. But for, Met for Grand Theft Auto 5, I honestly can't tell. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a pretty tough question here. Man, this guy's like a freaking sponge. He's soaking it up. If he's dead, that means... Don't say it, Snake. What happened to the air raid? No stealth bombers in sight. Snake, can you hear me? Colonel, are you okay? Colonel, what happened? The Secretary of Defense has been arrested. Early retirement. Arrested? I was able to get into contact with the President. Metal Gear, the training exercise, all of it. It was all the Secretary of Defense acting alone. Acting alone? What happened to the air raid and the nuclear strike? The orders were rescinded. The F-117s and the B-2 Spirits have returned to the base. Once again, I have complete authority over this operation. I see. Washington isn't stupid enough to use nukes to cover up a few secrets. I wonder about that. In any case, the danger's over. Thanks, Snake. Colonel, you can rest easy. Merrill's fine. Really? Thanks. Thank you, Snake. Snake, I'm sorry. I, I kept a lot of things from you. 
It's okay, Colonel. Snake, I'm not a Colonel. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got a present for you. There's a snowmobile close to you. Mei Ling saw it on the satellite photos. This time of year, the glaciers are pretty calm. You should be able to ride right out of there. I'll bet the boys at the DIA and the NSA never expected you to come home alive. Me neither. I better not show my face around here. No danger of that. You two officially died after your jeep sank into the ocean. That's not too far from the truth. Also, there's a helicopter waiting for you on Fox Island. Dr. Hal Emmerich should be somewhere on the base. I want someone to bring him in. I understand. Leave it to me. Okay, Roy. Are you gonna be okay? Don't worry. I've got an insurance policy. A hard copy of all Mei Ling's data. As long as I've got that, you, me, and Mei Ling will be fine. The battery on these nanomachines will run out soon. They won't be able to follow us. I guess we won't meet again. Don't worry. I'll pay you a visit sometime. Really? I look forward to that. Roy, just tell me one thing. What? About Fox Die. Meryl will be fine. She wasn't included in its programming. What about me? It killed Liquid. Naomi said that she wants to talk to you face to face about that. How is she? Don't worry. Mei Ling is with her right now. I'm switching over to Naomi. Snake, it's me. Naomi. I heard about my brother. I'm sorry. But he had one last message he wanted to say to you. He told me to tell you to forget about him and to go on with your own life. Frankie said that? Yeah. He also said he'll always love you. Naomi. Your brother just saved you, me, and the whole world. He fought with every ounce of strength in his body. Maybe. Maybe now he's finally found some peace. He wasn't really my brother anymore. Ever since he fought with you in Zanzibar, he's been like a ghost. A ghost looking for a place to die. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, Liquid died from Fox Die too. What about me? When am I gonna go? That's up to you. What do you mean? Everybody dies when their time is up. Yeah, so when's mine up? It's up to you how you use the time left to you. Live, Snake. That's all I can say to you. Each person is born with their fate written into their own genetic code. It's unchangeable, immutable. But that's not all there is to life. I finally realized that. I told you before the reason that I was interested in genes and DNA. Because I wanted to know who I was. Where I came from. I thought that if I analyzed my DNA, I could find out who I was. Who my parents were. And I thought that if I knew that, then I'd know what path I should take in life. But I was wrong. I didn't find anything. I didn't learn anything. Just like with the genome soldiers, you can input all the genetic information, but that doesn't make them into the strongest soldiers. The most we can say about DNA is that it governs a person's potential strengths, potential destiny. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live, Snake, whether or not you're in the Fox Die program isn't important. The important thing is that you choose life. And then live. Don't you think, Snake? Don't worry. I'm going to choose life too. Until today, I've always looked for a reason to live. But from here on, 
I'm going to just live. Genes exist to pass down our hopes and dreams for the future through our children. Living is a link to the future. That's how all life works. Loving each other, teaching each other. That's how we can change the world. I finally realized it. The true meaning of life. Thank you, Snake. Look, I found this. Let's keep it as a reminder. Of what? A reminder of a successful mission? Or the first time we met? A reminder of how to live. Huh? Until today, I've lived only for myself. Survival has been the only thing I cared about in my life. That's not just you. That's how everyone is. I only felt truly alive when I was staring death in the face. I don't know. Maybe it's written into my genes. What about now? What do your genes say about your future now? Maybe it's time I live for someone else. Someone else? Yeah. Someone like you. Maybe that's the real way to live. So, where to, Snake? David. My name's David. Okay. So where to, Dave? Hmm. I think it's time we look for a new path in life. A new path? A new purpose. Will we find it? We'll find it. I know we'll find it. What are those? Caribou. To the Aleutians, the caribou is a symbol of life. It'll be spring here soon. For us too. Yeah. Spring brings new life to everything. It's a time for hope. I've lived here a long time. Alaska has never looked more beautiful. The sky, the sea, the caribou, and most of all, you. I think I'm gonna like this new life. Come on, let's enjoy life. And that, folks, has been Let's Play Metal Gear Solid. I cannot believe we finally have reached the credits. This feels awesome. All I have to say uh, is, as of 1998, there were 26,000. <laughs> like, this, that's, I think that's kind of funny. Like, it just shows how old, like, nostalgic, I guess, the game is. Yeah, really like, the, the facts are updated in the remake, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Whenever really? that came out, yeah, in like 2005 or something, I don't remember. But as customary with all my Let's Plays, I'll go ahead and give a little bit of a rundown, like kind of a review of what I think, you know, various aspects of the game. You can interject small things if you want. All I have to say before we start is it looks like Hideo Kojima did everything. Yeah, he <laughs> was like the heart and soul of the project. He, look, even camera setting had Hideo Kojima in it. He did like the map design too. Yeah, he I was, like, yeah, he was in this director. game. They're, <laughs> everything. I mean, he's awesome. But let's go ahead and begin. I'll start with graphics. I think these the graphics for this game still look 
pretty awesome even today. I, I don't think it's aged that bad, really. The only thing that I would have to say graphics-wise I didn't love is the fact that nobody had faces. That, I was just gonna get there. I'm like, that's the only thing that I think has not aged well. Like in Final Fantasy VII, how we say like the... The Popeye arms? Yes. Yeah, the same thing applies here. The faces, how they don't have any expression and stuff, is kind of bad. But, I mean, it was 98. I guess a lot of... I don't think any games were doing, like, animated faces at that time. I can't so you can't really rip on it, really. But besides, the, you know, the graphics I thought were fine. Now on to music. You can hear the main theme here and see all this, like, beautiful Alaskan imagery here of the polar bear going beast. Well, speaking of, <laughs> before we go to music graphics, I guess I could kind of include that. The fact that there's live action. Yeah, that really that really is cool, too, I think this game. Makes, they, like, it wasn't overused, like... Yeah, no. it was, well, implemented. I don't... Yeah, it was... Okay. There you go. And the music for this game... I think is great. I mean, the suspenseful themes they've got, the main theme, all the music is just, it fits so perfectly to the game. It's timeless stuff. I, I think it's great. I, the thing is, like, for Max Payne, I can, like, remember the theme for Max Payne. Yeah. The only thing is, like, for this game, I just, I don't, I can't think of the theme. Like, uh, you know, yeah, this is it right here. I, I mean, the music is good. It's just, for me, maybe it's just because I don't have a history with it. It's yeah, just... that's true. This is like, isn't this like the first Metal Gear game you've seen? Like, you haven't yep. played any, right? Nope, never played one. Yeah, so. so. I think the music is pretty good. We'll go on to the gameplay. The gameplay, I still think, holds up. I mean, the stealth is very basic. This was back in 98, before, you know, the newer Metal Gear games, before, before Splinter Cell and everything. So, I mean, it's really early, really, I guess, kind of aged a little bit, but it still does hold up. I think it's totally playable. There's no, op you know, there's no problems playing it. There's no problems, and really, like, I can... I don't mind the, the fact that you have to go through the menus and all that kind of stuff to change everything, but yeah. what, I think maybe what would have been cool is if maybe... Do you move with the analog stick or the D-pad? In the actual... In the game, like, moving around. Oh, I use the analog stick, yeah. So you can choose either one? Or, yeah, you can well, choose. what if they made it so, like, if you... You can switch between different items with, like, the D-pad or something like that, instead of having to go through your menu. Oh, I like... see what you're saying, yeah. They kept that through all the four games, though. That's, like, tradition, I guess, for Metal Gear, but I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's not a huge deal, but... Yeah, I... well, some people like that when you press the button and it kind of stops the action, you know? I mean, the thing is, like, if I... I, I kind of wanted action, though. Yeah, it's, I see what you're saying about that. So that is a good point you bring up. But playability-wise, the game is totally still playable. It has not aged bad in that respect. A good thing that... Or, I mean, one game that does it well that I can think of is Dead Space 1. No, oh, yeah, with the item switching thing? Yeah, like, it yeah. didn't have to be like that. But I like the fact that... Like, what if Dead Space was like, okay, let me pause, there's somebody coming up. Like, <laughs> then, well, that's a horror game, so that would ruin But that. this is also stealth. Like, it should be, like... Yeah, uh, kind of, kind of where it raises the suspense that you always have the option of getting caught. Yeah, I guess. See, I like, see, see what you're saying, I'm, yeah. It's playable, and I don't think it's bad by any means, but I think... I don't know, the fact that... It, well, the codec is different, like, it stops action, but when yeah. you're actually... The gameplay switching items stops the action. Yeah, from, uh, I see what you're saying. Well, we're looking at it from a 2012 perspective, too. You gotta remember that. In 98, that probably was not a big deal at all, I don't think. I'm trying to... Well, shooters back in the day, you could switch weapons with, the, like, different... Third person games? I don't even remember really. I can't think of honestly like any other third person games yeah, other than so. Resident Evil and Metal Gear Solid from this time period. Like, yeah, well, I'm sure there were some. But that's anyway. it for gameplay. Now, <laughs> perfect how this comes up. Yoji Shinkawa, the visual artist and the guy that did all the artwork for the game, I think that's fantastic. He has great, you know, artistic design. It carries through all the Metal Gear games. You know, when you're seeing a picture or a piece of art from the Metal Gear series. I mean, if you have if you have the actual game, you can flip through the manual and you see all the artwork. That's always one really shining, like, example of something that's really, you know, it's exclusive to the Metal Gear series, so I think that's really awesome as well. Yeah, all I have to say, like, it's kind of what you said, is it has its own style. Yeah, you, you, so. you know when you're seeing a Shinkawa drawing, like, it's really, really awesome. It's one thing that he carries all the way through, and look, directed by Hideo Kojima, of course, did a wonderful job with the game. But that's basically all I want to touch on for this. Overall, I'd have to give the game, for me, because it's a timeless classic for me, a 10 out of 10, I love this game. See, always have, always will, I don't care. From an outsider's perspective, like, one of the few, it seems like, that hasn't played the game, and it's 2012, I'm not gonna give it a 10 out of 10, I'd probably say 8 to 9, honestly, like, it's not, it's a good game, I'm not gonna say it's bad, but... Yeah. Well, let's hear this last outro. The type of life they want to live. The important thing is that you choose life. And then live. Yes, sir.
sir. The entire unit was wiped out. Those two are still alive. The Vector? Yes, sir. Fox die should become activated soon. Right on schedule. Yes, sir. I recovered all of Rex's dummy warhead data. No, sir. My cover is intact. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes, the DARPA chief knew my identity, but he's been disposed of. Yes, the inferior one was the winner after all. That's right. Until the very end, Liquid thought he was the inferior one. Yes, sir, I agree completely. It takes a well-bounced individual such as yourself to rule the world. No, sir. No one knows that you were the third one, Solidus. What should I do about the woman? Yes, sir. I'll keep her under surveillance. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. President. All right, so here's my score from the game. We've got game level normal, seven hours, four minutes, and 33 seconds, and there's all the other stats for you. I got the code name Leopard, and I've unlocked the camera and bandana, which gives you unlimited ammo. That's awesome. What does the camera do? The camera, you just take pictures of it. I'm actually oh. going to use that to go ahead and find all the ghosts throughout the game. I'll put that in a bonus episode after this finale for you guys. Now... One thing that I want to talk about right now is my Metal Gear knowledge just got thrown to the floor. <laughs> yeah, mention that. Wiped. Cl I'm embarrassed. This you whole should. Time, that's dirty. This whole time, I thought the name of the, the Mr. President was Solidist Snake. <laughs> oh my. Like, as in there's Solid Snake, Liquid Snake, and, then the and Solidist solid Snake. That's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> like, the most solid snake. Like, <laughs> no, it is Solid Dust snake and something really cool right if i didn't show you guys in the first episode if you're just messing around with your d-pad you can change the colors of the stuff in the background as oh, you can dang. see you see that how it's changing pretty cool this little thing there but since this, this is the end of the uh, finale, I'm going to go ahead and give a few updates for you guys. I'm not entirely sure. Awesome. awesome. I'm not entirely sure of what I want to do after this game. There's a ton of games I have for my Steam library. I've got, I don't even know, the Bioshock games, Grand Theft Auto games. I've got PS3 games, Uncharted. Uh, I've got so many games. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. Resident Evil 2 is always an option, as you guys, long-term fans, know with me. <laughs> and I'll probably be putting a little bit of, like, an update video when I narrow down the choices a little bit. So you guys can go ahead and pick what you would like to see from me next. But by all means, go ahead and leave it in the comments if you have a game you're interested in. Maybe I have it, so. We've been talking, or you've been talking about Resident Evil 2 for a probably... Yeah, maybe now it's time that it comes. And for those of you who don't know, way back in January 2011, that's when Resident Evil 2 was going to happen. Yeah, when we both started started full-grown gaming and I was like oh man Resident Evil 2 and it never happened <laughs> awesome. I was like maybe now it is maybe now it's the time so if you guys are demanding Resident Evil 2 I'll make it happen but I'll go ahead and make a video about that like I said once I narrow down choices and also just so you can guys so you guys can keep you know following me I suggest you guys go ahead and follow me on Twitter please so I can update you on what's going on around here I've only got nine followers so please feel free to go ahead and follow me on Twitter so you can get more updates on what's going on here at Republic of Joe but that's about it, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. I hope you guys have enjoyed Let's Play Metal Gear Solid. I have loved playing this game. Like I said, it's a great game that I was able to do as my first Let's Play on my own channel. I was happy to have Kyle here for the last episodes. Yep. And I will see you guys in the near future in whatever game I choose to do next. So thank you for watching, and I can't wait to see you next time.